It's Toronto's podcast on the Canada's Podcast Network. Today, I'm joined by Brian Kingston. He's the Vice President of Business Council of Canada. Welcome, Brian. Hi, thanks for having me. You're most welcome. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to speak to us today. Yeah, no problem. Happy so, to be So for those of us, uh, or, or those uh, who may not know, uh, what is the role of the Business Council of Canada and uh, how many members do you currently have or represent? Yeah, so the, the Business Council is uh, a not-for-profit, nonpartisan organization um, that represents business leaders of Canada's largest companies. Um, so we have around uh, 160 members right now. Uh, they employ about 1.7 million Canadians uh, and represent about half the value uh, of the TSX. Um, and our members are, are very diverse in uh, both the region uh, uh, that they um, operate in as well as their sectors. So everything from finance, oil and gas, manufacturing, agriculture, seafood, you name it, um, all of those sectors are represented by the Business Council. That's great. And BCC has been very vocal uh, about raising some of the issues on behalf of the businesses uh, it represents. Can you uh, maybe uh, let us know about some of the issues that you have been vocal on? Sure, yeah. So we've been following uh, the coronavirus COVID-19 issue um, for some time. Um, you know, at first it was really about um, supply chain impacts that were emerging out of uh, China, Wuhan, where we saw um, Canadian companies were having difficulty uh, obtaining products because of the shutdowns that we had witnessed there. Of course, at that time, we never imagined um, that, that COVID would spread at, at the pace that it did, uh, and we never imagined that it would come to Canada in the way it has. Um, so it's become much more, of course, than simply a supply chain issue now. Um, our focus has been on a few things. Um, number one, the, the first message that we got out uh, as an association um, was uh, to urge uh, other employers to take strong action to protect uh, employee health. Um, our members moved quite quickly. I mean, these are large companies that have um, pretty... Uh, um, active, you know, HR policies and, and able, uh, were able to respond to this quickly in, you know, in terms of um, encouraging work from home and other, other measures. Um, but we wanted uh, our, our members to urge others to do the same and to take this seriously and take aggressive action. So that was our very first uh, statement when this uh, began. And, and since then, we've been really focused on uh, both pushing government to take the decisive action needed to contain the virus um, you know, we recognize that this is going to be very painful uh, for the Canadian economy, um, but other countries have shown us that if you don't contain the virus through aggressive action, it will get out of control and the impact uh, on both the health of Canadians and the economy more broadly will be far worse. Um, so we've been supportive of taking really aggressive measures right now, um, shut things down as much as possible, get a handle on this and then move on to helping the economy uh, recover. Um, so, you know, th three areas that we've been really focused on more recently um, have been trying to encourage government to support employers to keep employees on the payroll. Uh, we think that's really important. Uh, none of our members want uh, to lay people off. Uh, that is absolutely their last um, choice. Um, so we've been asking government to try and, you know, rather than putting people into the EI system, support employers and help them pay their employees. Um, we've also been um, uh, pushing for greater support, capital support, liquidity support for companies that uh, are in dire need. Um, we wanna make sure that when we come out of this, we actually have a business sector that's relatively intact. Um, so uh, that's been a big focus. And then the last piece has really been uh, on essential services and making sure that as provinces move to shut down different sectors of the economy, they're doing so in a coordinated fashion so that we don't find out that, you know, a supplier in Quebec can no longer produce a product for Ontario, which turns out is actually pretty important right now. So um, that's been kind of the main focus, but frankly, things are changing uh, on an almost hourly basis these days. So who knows where we'll be next week. And um, let's talk about a little bit about uh, EI and EI benefits. Uh, in your latest statement, which was issued yesterday, um, it talks about EI system being overburdened. 
Uh, mm -hmm. We know that the usual uh, number of applications per week is around 45,000. In the last week, we've seen 1 million applications. Um, and with the royal assent yesterday of the bill, uh, the uh, Canada's uh, emergency support bill, um, there was an additional $82 billion uh, that is being used now to uh, give benefits uh, through CRA. Do you think that that will assist in terms of alleviating the burden of EI and how helpful will that be? I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. As you noted, you know, the EI system was overburdened. I think government only processed about 15% of applications, despite the fact that they had thousands of public servants uh, working away on it. Um, so, you know, it was obviously not working. This program is meant to divert people from EI, get them onto this benefit, which they say will be quicker. Uh, and because it's paid out through the CRA, um, you'll actually see the benefits immediately. Um, so, you know, I think it's a step in the right direction. We still think that a direct wage subsidy to employers would have been the best way to do this because you, you simply, the employer would pay the employee, they would have paid them the equivalent to the, to the EI, uh, and then they would file for a reimbursement at a later date. Um, government believes the CERB program is, is the best approach. So, um, you know, we're, I, we're willing to, to see how it works, see how uh, employers uh, respond to it and hope that it is effective. I mean, the, the three kind of key factors that we look at here are speed. Um, can you actually get the money out the door to people that need it quickly? Um, scale, can you scale this thing? Um, can you actually uh, process 4 million applications, 5 million applications? quickly. And, and then finally, it's efficiency. Um, is it easy for people to apply? And is it easy for government to get money in their hands? Um, so if it, if it meets those criteria, um, then I think it's a success, but it's, it's a bit too early to tell. And uh, the situation right now is that people are waiting uh, for a few weeks uh, to be able to access EI fun funds. Uh, they're left without a job or being laid off, which makes it really difficult to uh, basically purchase the necessities such as you know putting food on the table paying for uh for rent so hopefully the uh the cra route will be more expedient uh and more people will be able to access benefits quickly uh quicklier um so let's talk about the actual budget itself in your statement it mentions that us has put in or is contributing 850 billion dollars canada is contributing $82 billion. So why, why the big discrepancy and do you think that the federal government should be doing more than they are? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think they're gonna have to do a lot more. Um, you know, they did move pretty quickly to, to announce that first $82 billion, $85 billion amount. Um, but the important thing here to note is that $55 billion of that is in tax deferral. So that's not direct support uh, to, to the Canadian economy. It's helpful, don't get me wrong. Companies knowing that they, they can um, push off paying their taxes until a later date. Um, but when you compare it to what the U.S. has done, you know, $350 billion in, in loans for small business, another $500 billion to be pumped in uh, to the economy in the terms of um, uh, both direct support to companies that are facing potential bankruptcy, as well as capital and liquidity measures. Um, I just don't think that we've done enough. I mean, when you look at um, what other countries are spending to uh, help support their economies, Canada's total spend right now is about 3.4% of our GDP. France uh, is sitting at 15.6%, Germany over 15%. Um, so some co countries are, are moving more aggressively to, to introduce a much greater fiscal firepower. Now, to the government's credit, they have been clear, Minister Morneau has said, we'll do whatever it takes. And he's said that this is, this is a phased approach. It's not as though one announcement will be all that's required. So I fully expect that as this evolves, you'll see them announce more supports um, and basically try and help companies uh, that really need it throughout this process. So it's phase one of what I hope isn't, you know, five phases, but maybe a couple more phases to come. And I think a lot of small businesses right now um, are thinking it's great that these loans are available, but 
I'm struggling as it is, do I really want more loans or do I want government help in terms of you know, greater wage subsidies, which is something that uh, UK and Denmark are doing and they have up to 80% of wage subsidy. Um, so a lot of things I think to follow and to come and to see how our federal government uh, will react in terms of uh, assisting businesses, uh, which are really important uh, in, in terms of the life and health of Canada's economy as a whole. Uh, so any, uh, from what you are seeing so far, if the government doesn't take the action uh, that they're supposed to, where do you see this going? And I know in, in the last statement, it also mentions recession, depression. Where are we heading if this is, if this is not acted upon? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the current forecast for the Canadian economy are very worrying. Um, uh, we're now expecting in the second quarter uh, for the Canadian economy to contract by as much as 20%. These are just unbelievable numbers that we would have never expected. Um, and employment um, you know, is definitely likely to, or sorry, unemployment to spike well above 10% and could go far, far higher. Um, so this is not a good situation, uh, clearly. And the, the reason we're asking government to act quickly um, with really significant support for businesses is because we do know that we will get through this. The virus will be contained. It has been contained in other countries. And what will happen afterwards is we're hoping for a, a bit of a V-shaped recovery where you actually, when Canadians get the all clear that you, know, you can leave your home, you can go out and spend and do the things that you you like to do, um, that they they will go out and do that and will return to a, a certain level of normalcy. Um, the fear is if, if so much damage has been done that small businesses on your, your local main street are just out there, they've simply had to stop operations. You've got vacancies, um, you know, even companies, medium or large companies in some sectors that potentially have become bankrupt or had to restructure. It makes it difficult uh, for that more aggressive recovery to take place after the virus is contained. So, um, you know, we really need to make sure that it, it, if the economy is like a car, um, we're hoping we can kind of just put it into idle for the next few weeks and then restart it. The last thing we want to do is turn the thing off completely, uh, which makes things a lot more difficult to get moving again. Okay, great. Brian, thank you so much for your time today. Um, and uh, the viewers and the listeners can also visit uh, the Business Council of Canada website for the latest update uh, or updates on your uh, advocacy work. Um, and uh, again, any last words of uh, wisdom for the business owners out there? Just, um, you know, it, it, this is going to be changing um, constantly. Unfortunately, there is no clear source of information on these programs. I mean, the CERB, uh, when it was announced yesterday, it, it, it took me quite some time to figure out exactly where the details are and and how to figure this all out. So I would just urge business owners, if you're part of an association, if you're part of you know, CFIB or the Canadian Chamber, um, you know, reach out to them. Um, that's, that's what associations are, are there for. Um, so it's a really important time to make sure that you have information to all the programs that are being announced because there is a lot of support being unrolled and sometimes it's really difficult to uh, determine if it actually applies to you. So we just you know, urge people to, to make sure they, they make those contacts and, and figure it out. Great advice. Thank you, Brian. I'm Andrea Sesum, your Toronto's host for Canada Business Podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.